Welcome back to Elgin 2030. We've been away on spring break where we had a blast in Memphis, Tennessee. Although I have to say, if you're into country music, make sure you visit O'Sullivan's Irish Pub right there on Beale Street where you can't find an Irish tune to save your ass. Tony! Hey, city manager, how was your spring break? Better than yours! We all got pay raises, you know! Yeah, I heard something about that. And where'd you guys go? It's exclusive! Well, I know last year you went to, uh, where'd you go? Breezes Resort on FunJet. So, did you go there again? We went down to a little place called Bohemian Grove. I know, I had a guy following you around with a camera. What? You can't do that! No, that was in 2003. It's all taken care of now. I just did one for Peter where the most valuable item for bed turned out to be a human skull. Really? Filled with strawberry and peach scones. That's real strange, Emperor. Where is city manager? He should have been back by now. Probably going through their humiliating initiation rituals. We'll all be down to the oak soon enough. Does that guy ever wake up? What's the deal with that? So I hear you're going after Larkin Center next, Emperor. Oh, yes. After I finish distracting everyone away from German Shepherds and Elgin, my goal will be to close the doors on Larkin Center. You're the boss. Who's that? Just me. Can we go down to the Oak now? No. Everything was going great until the real Burt Ward showed up and kicked my ass. I'm going back to Motel 6. They maybe eat a lot of tree bark. There's so much to discuss, it's hard to really decide what exactly to talk about next. I could talk about the exorbitant raises in the city manager's office, for example, which were paid for by payroll cutbacks in other departments. And believe me, I will once I have just a bit more information. I could talk about what the city wants to do to one of our smaller residential neighborhoods by rezoning their land out from under them. And after I meet with the right people, that will also be discussed in the near future. But I think I'd really just like to ask this question. Hey, Mr. Mayor and city manager, what the fuck are you trying to do to our fire department? Let me backtrack for all of our viewers. I'm going to talk about some concepts that are important to this topic and then talk about how we fit into the standards for departments on a statewide level. But first, why am I talking about the fire department? To be as blunt as, and clear as I can, I believe in full support for all frontline professions. But when you consider that the job of the police and the fire department is to run towards the problem while everyone else runs away, my vote is for all the support they require in the form of money, manpower, equipment, and support roles like training and prevention. But most importantly, when you cut or limit services for police or the fire department, what you are really doing is making the city less safe for its citizens. And some people on the council think they can get away with this without anyone, anyone noticing. More specifically, since the fire department reports up to the city manager, this is where I want all your attention to be focused while we talk through this series. The Elgin Fire Department is comprised of seven stations, which are configured in one of three ways. They can house an engine, an engine and an ambulance, or an engine, ambulance, and truck. Now, this may be an oversimplification, but just so that we're all on the same page, a fire engine puts out fires. It contains the pumps and hoses to put water on a fire. A fire truck is like a rolling toolbox, which carries ladders, rescue equipment, and other support tools to fight fires. An ambulance, obviously, moves people to the hospital, but more important to this series, in Elgin, there is always an ambulance at the scene of a fire to render first aid and medical attention. Elgin also uses a strategy usually reserved for one-horse towns called jump companies, where crews take out the appropriate vehicle for the call. So they will staff enough crew at that station to take out either an ambulance or a truck, for example, but not both at the same time. We have three stations that utilize jump companies. Now this all sounds well and good, maybe even efficient, until you think about something like the house explosion January 12th, where six ambulances were required and Elgin was only able to send two specifically because we use jump companies. Now here's a fun fact. There is no city that's comparable in size to Elgin that uses 
jump companies. Now this becomes even more complex, however, when you realize that anyone serving on a jump company is required to be a firefighter paramedic, since they also have to be able to run an ambulance and be able to stabilize medical emergencies. Of course, this would be easier to accomplish if we staffed a full-time training officer. Here's fun fact number two. Elgin is the largest fire department in the state without a training officer, fire marshal, or a full-time truck company. Now I've heard a lot of people talk about overtime when the subject of the fire department comes up and they tend to try to use that in a negative way. Now personally I believe this is because of the line of bullshit that gets passed down from the city manager's office, especially since they made the choice to allow this level of overtime. But before we can talk about overtime, we need to talk about staffing levels. According to a survey completed by the International City Managers Association of over 1,200 localities, the average number of fire department personnel is 1.6 for every 1,000 citizens. And in 2005, there was a study done which came to the basic conclusion that Elgin had two options, hire more firefighters to reduce overtime or continue to pay overtime. Now the city manager, and the mayor presumably, chose to continue to pay overtime as it is cheaper than to hire full-time personnel with benefits. The firefighters will be the first ones to tell you that they are being hurt by the amount of overtime they are required to work. This level of service to the community suffers and on-the-job on injuries become more common. More injuries means more overtime and this becomes a perpetual cycle. So how many firefighters are we missing according to the ICMA standard? Well, if you said 34, you're absolutely right. Elgin is the seventh largest city in the state, and we have the fifth highest call volume to the fire department. And instead of giving them what they need, the city manager and the mayor tell them they need to accomplish not only their own work, but to pick up the slack for 34 more employees. To top that off, with no dedicated training officer, the city makes it as hard as possible for them to keep up their certifications. And with no fire marshal, there's no protection or foreknowledge for what they might be walking into on a call. Are you guys starting to see the problems here? So what's the end result of all this reckless and short-sighted management of the fire department? The citizens of Elgin burn as they did on January 12th, when we needed six ambulances and Elgin could only send two. We'll be discussing the fire department in the next several episodes, so if you have a story you'd like to share or any information you'd like to send, you can email me at tony at elgin2030.com. See you next time, Elgin. <laughs>